morning, everyone. How are you? It's good to see everybody. Welcome to episode 183. My name is Rachel, and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. And this is Woolen Spinning. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. I'm really excited to share with you everything that I've got going right now. It's been kind of a rough week, so um, I just, before the podcast started, like before I started the stream, I just sat, took a couple of really deep breaths. I absolutely love this space that I share with you guys on Saturday mornings, and uh, it's just such a wonderful time in my week, and it's something that I look forward to all week. So, um, yeah, thank you so much, you guys, for being here. So welcome to new viewers and to returning viewers. Thank you for checking out the show, for being here, for watching week after week. And thank you especially to the Patreon community because you guys are the ones that keep the show on the air week after week, and you're here at the live stream every week. So thank you. This show is released on Tuesdays publicly, but uh, for patrons, it is available earlier. So if that is something that you are interested in, please don't hesitate to check that out at patreon.com slash wellfordpearls. Thank you so much, you guys, for uh, your kind words. My mom fell. That's what happened. Uh, she fell on Thursday morning. So um, I got a phone call from her. I had a meeting in the morning and then after that, like almost immediately after we had said goodbye and we'd had such a lovely morning, um, my mom called and, uh, she's just obviously very upset and, uh, she's, she's hurt her hand really super badly. So I'm heading over there this afternoon to change all of the dressings. I actually thought I was going to have to take her, take her to emerge. Um, I was like this close, um, but then I was able to get into it and see what was really going on. And I was able to to look after it. So it's always hard when you have to nurse your family, right? Like, I don't know if anybody else has ever been in that situation of caregiver, whether you're, you know, a nurse or a, or a, or a physician or just some other helping caring profession, whether it's a teacher or, you know, um, a carried or a, and you know, a, I mean, there's just so many, so many different caring, caring professions out there and all of the ones that we don't even think of as being caring professions, which are caring professions. And, uh, you know, anytime you have to be in that role, for a, for a loved one, it's it's always emotionally draining, right? It's emotionally exhausting, and um, it's I'm just really blessed to be able to be there for her. So uh, I went over yesterday after school. The kids were amazing um, about being really quiet, and I dr changed her dressings, and then we came home. So anyhow, yeah, thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Sarah. Um, that's very kind of you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, you guys are are awesome. Um, so how are you all doing? How was your week? We are into the January blues. We are like fully into uh, January now. And of course, this is when the blues start to set in for the new year. Um, so how are you guys doing? How are you holding up? It's important to sort of acknowledge that that happens, that there's that dip after the holiday season and after the, the swing of the new year. We're all coping with a lot. If you're following the news, we're coping with a lot of information and a lot of information overload. So I am thinking of you guys and I um, I hope that you're all doing well and, and looking after yourselves, whatever that looks like. Even if it's just to say, enough, I'm done. <laughs> That's okay too. That's really important. So thank you, Karma. Um, oh, thank you, Dorothy. She says, pretty sweater. I think, um, I, think I saw it pass by in the chat. Um, was it Rebecca made a comment about the, I remember watching that sweater go into the dye bath. Yes. So this is my spark cardigan. Uh, Rebecca and I, when she was here in March, we dyed it with some natural dye. We did a really super low depth of shade matter. I think it was matter. Uh, or it may have been, co no, it wasn't cochineal. It was matter. I'm pretty sure it was matter. Anyways, uh, really super low uh, depth of shade. Like we did, uh, I did a, like basically like a wash. I haven't worn it as much as I had hoped, but I think what ended up happening was it got kind of buried in my sweater drawers. And then this morning when I was going through my stuff, I was sort of like, oh my goodness, I haven't been wearing this. Like, why not? So I pulled it out and I thought it's a burst of sunshine. So it has good memories, this sweater. It is a hand spun two ply. Uh, from Diz Darrow Ranch, and it was uh, a Romney mohair blend. And I uh, spun it uh, two ply. It, we actually ended up using the remaining yarn for our warp for our sheep to shawl um, back in 2019 before um, everything sort of shut down. So, yeah, thank you so much, you guys. Mm. Eve, you're hilarious. Slides in late, even though she set an alarm for 4.20 p.m. <laughs> She's in the UK. I think it is matter, Kelly. I think you're right. 
Um, I feel like I had the blues at the beginning of the year and I'm just perking up and feeling better. Have my mojo back. That's wonderful, Maggie. I'm glad to hear that. I know, uh, you know, January is always a bit of a ride for people. Like I always feel like I'm kind of on a bit of a roller coaster in January. I start off with this, like, you know, um, yeah, with kind of a bit of a bang, I feel really energized and then I kind of dip. And so I've come to expect it. And, um, I think that actually has really been, uh, when you, when you know, like when you know it's coming, then you can sort of weather anything. Oh, Diana, holding up well, have limited my social media to one hour. Man, that goes fast and have more time for fiber arts and such. That's a great way of, of managing the messages coming in from outside and figuring and working on figuring out the Slack channel and all the convos going on there. You folks are amazing, positive and encouraging. Thank you, Diana. They are. They are an amazing community. You guys give yourselves a pat on the back and a big hug because you guys are incredible. So thank you. In today's show, I've got kind of a myriad of spins that I've been starting. I actually, for the first time in quite a long time, don't really have anything that I'm working on. Um, I tend to be a monogamous maker. Um, if you guys have noticed over over the course of the life of the podcast, I, I'll talk about multiple things and I'll have multiple projects going at once, but there's kind of like the one project that I'm focused on that I'm really working on almost exclusively until it's done. And um, I'm actually at a point right now, which is a really nice place to be at the beginning of the year, where I don't really have anything specific that I'm working on. So I'm kind of dabbling in stuff, I'm kind of doing a little bit over here and a little bit over there, but I'm not really doing anything specific. The only thing that I was working on was... Um, the marmor and I finished it this week. I had the two sleeves to do and uh, it went like that. And unfortunately it's not dry. I was really hoping that it would be dry for today and I could show it to you guys and model it and uh, chat a little bit about it, but it'll just be something to look forward to next week. Um, so today will be kind of a, a a sprinkling, if you will, of sort of all the different spins that I've sort of started and I'm sort of just getting into. And uh, and then we've got some really great community participation that I'm excited to share with you about. So let's um, let's get into the show with, uh, without further ado. So I was just reading the comments in chat. You guys were saying you all kind of have different times of the year that you sort of have these dips. Like Eve was saying that she sort of dips from January to March. So she always sort of takes it easy. And then Kathy was saying, uh, Kathleen was saying that she dips in the fall, but then she rises up after the holidays. Um, and you know, I, you guys are comparing weather. I think that's a big part of it is like how, how, what, what the weather's like in your area. You know, we always talk in the Northern hemisphere about this January to February dip, but of course down under, um, in the Southern hemisphere, it's your summer right now. So I'm sure it kind of feels a bit odd when those of us up here are talking about the, the January blues and the snow and the winter, and you guys are sort of entering your sun. Like my, uh, somebody that I follow in CrossFit, she was posting yesterday, uh, she's in um, Australia, she was posting yesterday about being at the beach with her little girl and there was gorgeous photos of them down at the beach and of course it's sunny and hot and um, yeah, it's very, very different um, when we're experiencing these different uh, different seasons uh, within our own continents and then also around the world because our community is completely um, global which is amazing. It's pretty cool to be able to say, I know people in Slovakia. <laughs> so, and other amazing countries around the world. It's really cool. I have to say, uh, what happened to the poet? Great question, Kathy. So I am still working on it. Um, what ended up kind of happening? So it fits beautifully. Um, it's knit on 3.5 millimeter needles, which you guys, um, m might remember from me talking about it in the past. I've kind of gotten a bit bogged down on it. And the same thing happened with this sweater, which is kind of ironic that I'm wearing this today. All of the lace that you do every row. And the same thing has kind of happened with Little Love by Anka's Trick. 
you're doing something every single row. And so cognitively, I have to be really engaged and I have to be really aware of what I'm doing every single row, which is totally fine. And I actually really like knits like that because I find a lot of the time um, you're just knitting back and forth and you're on autopilot. And I find it you know, you always get those comments from people who don't knit and don't don't do fiber arts where they're like, oh, it must be so meditative, it must be so relaxing, blah blah blah. And I mean, I guess it is. That's not really why we do this stuff for for me personally. Like I know for some that is absolutely the reason. For me though, um, I want to learn new things and I want to be engaged with the process and I want to be engaged with my making and what I'm doing. Um, and of course, I'm you know doing the teaching side for you guys. So a lot of my spins I'm, I'm really engaged in and I'm really like reflective about like what would be helpful about this? What could I talk about that would be helpful? Um, how would this, you know, help somebody else in something that they're working through, whatever, whatever it might be. And the poet, uh, because I, it's not really a sweater that I can wear right now, I sort of put it aside. And to be honest with you, I actually kind of thought that I would take it uh, as a road trip project to finish up when we've got a big drive, whether that's over spring break or when we go snowshoeing, because um, hopefully February 5th, some of these restrictions here locally will lift um, and we'll be able to go out a couple of times. Um, and then I'll use that time and I'll just take that project and just work on it. Um, because I know that once I get going on it, it won't take that long, but I also don't really, I can't really wear it right now. So I don't feel this big, like push to get it done, but come March, I'm going to want it. So it is still there and I've still got it in its project bag and it's actually on, it's in my knitting basket. So, um, I haven't abandoned it. It will get done. Actually, it's funny because my Sabah Boulin, um, that I knit back in August, the only reason why that sweater got done, because it was, it was a lot of knitting. Uh, that's a pattern by uh, Jessica Gore. Um, out of the publication called Woods, the only reason why that's what why that sweater was done so quickly was because um, we were sitting around the campfire in Tumbler Ridge, British Columbia, which is a very rural area of the province, with some people that we had just met, and uh, we've kept in touch, which is so cool. Um, Shonette is just a lovely person, and their kids are awesome. Her husband's name is Mike, too, which is so funny. Um, and they live in Charlie Lake, British Columbia, on acreage out in the middle of nowhere. And we kept in touch because we just hit it off. And... Um, that's why I got that done was just sitting at the campfire those four evenings, um, chatting with them and, and her and I getting to know each other and just connecting about the, the kids and they homeschool and just talking about some of the things, some of the challenges that they've had being so rural and homeschooling. Um, and uh, my uncle was the superintendent of schools on Haida Gwaii for many years through the eighties and nineties. And, um, he talked to him and his wife and she was a teacher. So she would take their boat out and go to the places around where they were, where there were kids that were, um, ocean locked. So they couldn't, there was no road in and out to their houses. So she would go and do their lessons and check in with them every couple of weeks. And, um, so talking to Shonette and kind of sharing some of those stories about the rural kind of rural education and some of the, the, the difficulties. Um, yeah. And that, that is how I got that sweater done. All that knitting. How many whips do I have at the moment? I probably have four, like knitting, knitting projects, maybe five, but, but only two that I'm actively working on. So little love. And I just started a shifty that I'm not quite ready to talk about. Cause I like literally have just cast it on. So we'll talk about that next week. Totally off topic. What kind of camper do you have? Hubby and I are getting a travel trailer in a couple of weeks and we are so excited. If you guys don't mind a little bit of a segue for just a moment. So we uh, tented for years. We had a four season tent, uh, which was absolutely necessary because we were, um, we had babies with us and we also had dogs and our one dog was quite old and quite arthritic and she needed to be warm. Um, so we had a four season uh, tent for many years. And we had a, a, a Nissan Xterra that we used. Um, and uh, we, when, after James was about a year old, we decided to go into a trailer, but we wanted to tow with our Xterra. So we bought a, um, uh, a Forest River R-Pod. Um, we had the one with the bunks at the front. So if you look up R-Pods, you'll find the one that has the bunks at the front. And we did not get the one with the slide because we didn't want the added weight because the places that we go, 
We ended up selling that trailer because every time we put the kids into bed or we were coming in and out of their beds or we were doing anything in the kitchen, we would bang our heads on the bulkhead. Um, and the bulkhead was like where the upper cabinets were. And honestly, I came home after a spring break with the kids one, one, um, one, one year and I had this massive goose egg on my head and I, Mike had been talking about wanting to trade it in for a while and um, I just said to him do whatever you want because I was really against it and yeah I was like do whatever you want like I'm done um, it, my head hurt it actually is still tender in that spot if I really push on it so we sold it and that trailer uh, was amazing it was an amazing off-road trailer it was phenomenal on B roads which are everywhere in BC and Alberta uh, well anywhere in Canada basically B roads are like everywhere so those are unpaved maintained roads um, and they can get really big potholes in them and they're on the maps and stuff but they're marked as B roads but they're not paved anyways amazing trailer we went everywhere with it we never broke anything on it we ended up trading it in and it's a little 18 foot teardrop shaped trailer hence the problem with the inside and knocking our heads all the time so we ended up actually selling our our xterra and our r pod to really good friends of ours who were moving and wanted something uh just locally on the on vancouver island up up on the northern end and they've been really happy with it and they still have they still have the 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 the, the units um, and we ended up going into a Geo Pro, um, which is a small 18 foot, but it's, it's the same footprint, but it's more of a square, like it's more of a traditional trailer. Um, it's got bunks in the back and then the dinette folds down into a queen size bed, which is a glorified extra large double bed, which is fine for us. Um, and we've been happy with it, but we have broken so much on it. It's not even funny. And again, it's those B roads. So um, that's my story. If you have any questions and you want to know more, just, just reach out. I'm happy to talk about it as you can see. Um, somebody had a question about, I knit the, po Ooh, Deborah knit the poet sweater. It took me so long as the lace is very tricky and couldn't find a rhythm. I was watching each stitch and won't be doing that much lace for a while now. You know what, Deborah? that's exactly my problem. You have to be paying attention every, every row. Yeah. So I feel like the only Canadian that really dislikes camping. Oh, Kelly, you're so funny. So I went to, um, went in nursing school. One of the guys that, um, uh, I went to school with, he, um, he, he wasn't from here. He'd immigrated from, from another country. And, uh, he, 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 you know, was, we were all like 20, 25 and he was dating and, um, he kept like going out on these dates with these girls and stuff. And then there was, a, I can't count the number of times he would come to school the next day, like on the Monday or the Tuesday or whatever. And he'd sit down, he'd just like flop into his chair, be like, what is it with these Canadian girls who want to go camping? <laughs> so funny he just didn't get it um we tried to explain it to him we took him yeah no <laughs> so um all right so let's talk about my spinning because we could just sit here and chat all day which you guys know um this is such a highlight for all of us for our week so let's talk first about my romney bat from diz Darrow ranch so this was something that I found in my stash by accident. I knew that I had it, but I wasn't exactly sure where it was. And I was cleaning out my cabinet over um, the Christmas break. And I was actually looking for some fiber for a sweater for my mom because she has asked for a, a gentle morning. So I'm in the sort of swatching process. And I talked about this really extensively on the wool circle a couple of weeks ago. And uh, so the bat is absolutely massive and I won't un, un like wrap it and show it to you exactly because it's just so, so big. It's bigger than me. Um, but the fiber is really lovely and it was carted up at a mill um, up in Kamloops here in British Columbia. And she basically just did it into a huge bat and didn't do anything else with it. So it wasn't made into any kind of um, pin drafted roving or anything like that. It's 100% Romney. So what I've been doing is randomly just pulling off the lengths of the carded fiber. And then from there, I've been stripping it down. <clears throat> I've been stripping it down like, um, like this into, into much, much thinner, um, uh, lengths of, of, ro of roving basically. Um, and because it's Romney is quite, uh, quite a good, a good length staple. 
uh, and it's it's got some nice curl to it it's got some nice halo to it and I'm finding that as I'm doing this pre attenuating and I've been adding a little bit of a twist to it just to keep it organized and keep it from from getting really tangled up I'm finding that by doing this it's kind of realigning the fibers and straightening them out a little bit so they're still carded and there's still sort of areas where the fibers are sort of a little bit tangled up and a little bit uh, knotted up and whatnot. But by doing this, it kind of uh, realigns these fibers and makes sort of this really nice cloud-like uh, fiber to spin and takes out some of these um, sort of areas of the bats that are a little bit tangled and, and not quite so, so sort of like you can't, I can't make this into comb top, but I can definitely straighten out the fibers and make it a bit smoother because you can see in here, there's a whole section right up here that's quite tangled up and quite um, um, sort of not parallel, not aligned, so on and so forth. And if I just give it a, a, a nice gentle tug and just sort of draft that out, um, it comes out really actually quite nicely. And you can see how much I can draft this out. Like I can really you know, get some good length and really pull it, pull it apart and really break up those fibers. And it doesn't take very long, like just in the couple of minutes that I've been chatting with you while I've been talking, I can do quite a lot of it and, 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 you know, make it a bit smoother. And of course the Romney, because it's long, uh, and smooth and there's not that, that sort of, um, it's, it's not sticky at all. It's beautifully prepped. It's really nice and clean. Uh, I can um, do that and, and create this really nice sort of um, spinning experience. So I have been uh, spinning it on my e-spinner. So let me um, just, you guys can just watch this here. I just want to make sure, yes, that the, that the video will continue on as we're talking. So really, really pretty. Um, and you can see how it's just spinning up. I, I moved my sample card there while I was spinning because I'm trying to match my singles. I want to do a three ply and I want the three ply to have a lot of um, sort of drape. I want it to really look like a worsted, like a, it's gonna be semi woolen because it's from a carded prep but I want it to look sort of more like a slightly more worsted spun yarn, not dense. Um, so I'm not smoothing really, really like really a lot. I'm, I'm more just moving my hand back as I'm spinning um, and then drafting forward and kind of moving my hand back. So it might look like I'm really smoothing, but I'm actually just moving my hand back. And, um, but I'm spinning my singles to be about 28 wraps per inch for a finished three ply of 14 wraps per inch. So this yarn, this fiber, even though it's from a worst, a woolen prep, it's not going to bloom, um, and sort of, you know, bounce up like we saw in the Rambouillet last week. This is going to, you know, when, whatever the finished wraps per inch is, it's going to be pretty close to that's going to be the finished yarn. Um, it'll be 14 wraps per inch kind of thing. So uh, the reason why I want a three ply is because on the gentle morning, there's textured rib. So there is some texturing in the stitches. It's not cables, but there is some texturing. There's texturing in the collar. And um, I did a three ply cheviot for mine. And I really like the structure of the three ply for that for that sweater. And so I'm going to do a three ply for this. And I just, I just want I just don't want the yarn to end up being really dense and really heavy. Um, so I want the structure of the three ply and then the lightness of a woolen yarn. So um, I'm going to finish off a, quite a large skein of three ply of this and I'm going to knit up, knit up a, a pretty good sized swatch. And then I'll show it to my mom and see if she wants me to keep going because if she doesn't like it and she doesn't want it, um, cause I don't want her to feel like she's, has to say yes. Like I want her to, I want it to be something that she's happy with. I will continue spinning it this way and creating this yarn for something for myself. So I just want to check, um, chat because you guys were talking about some stuff. Um, I swore off caravans after a wheel fell off one at 60 miles per hour en route to a big trip. After we had AA out to rethread the bolts, we got the spare on and made it to our trip. Then the spare disintegrated. Oh my gosh, Eve, I think that would totally put me off of camping. <laughs> um, 
Oh, that's a great pattern, Diana. So she's looking for easy and meditative knits these, these days. Just finished the Embers Hat by Tin Can Knits. It's a beautiful with hand spun and gradient experiments. That's a gorgeous pattern. I love the color work in that. Um, so Rebecca is spinning some alpaca, alpaca cormo bats right now. Alpaca and cormo. I wonder what that's like to spin. Um, unfortunately, I really should have put the bats through the carter a couple more times. A lot of alpaca is coming in, is still in clumps and locks. Oh, that's too bad, Rebecca. Do you still have access to the carter? Like, can you go back and recard? Um, oh, Sarah, if anybody is wanting to sell their Ashford e-spinner, I'm interested in buying it. I just, I might just... Get used to Hanson mini spinners um, last night in the mail. Maybe I can spin on the bike and spin on the e-spinner at the same time. Oh my gosh, Megan, if you can spin on the e-spinner and spin on your bike at the same time, I want a picture of that. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Um, so you got the Wooly Winder. Um, that's fantastic. That'd be great for plying actually, Megan. The Hanson mini spinner is lovely to work with. It is Priscilla, yeah. I haven't tried spinning Romney yet. I recently thought about buying a, a fleece, but I thought it needed to be combed and I'm curious. So it's funny, Sarah, that you would say that because Romney is one of those fibers that I would have traditionally wanted combed. The only reason why I have this and why I have this bat is because it was carded um, and it was done at this local mill and Lori gave it to me. Um, this isn't something that I probably would have bought or would have really entertained doing much with myself. Um, and I certainly wouldn't have... Um, uh, purchase this. Number one, it's way too much fiber. Number two, it's way too much fiber. And number three, what am I going to do with all of this fiber? I don't know how much the bat actually weighed. I don't have a scale that's big enough to weigh it. And, um, I, uh, Mike, Mike was like, well, I'll hold it. I'll get on the scale and then we'll do the, the math. But there wasn't much of a difference. So, um, it's probably about a pound of fiber, but I'm not really sure. It might be more like 1.5 pounds. It's really hard to tell with this stuff because it's so big. Like the, I, th I think I showed, did I show you guys last week? Like this thing is bigger than my head and this is compressed down. So the actual, when you start to unfold it, like the thing is like this, like it's huge. So, um, if anybody doesn't have any more questions about the actual spinning, yeah, Megan, I agree. The yarn will be wonderful for that sweater. I think it will be. And I think it'll work really super well the way that, um, uh, that I'm spinning it. Cause on the e-spinner, one of the things with the e-spinner that I have found, uh, with spinning it. So I often find with my yarns, I was mentioning this last week. I, I was really thinking about what I said last week after I said it on my, with my e-spinner, e-spinning yarns, they're all, I feel like they're always over twisted. And I think a lot of it is that I put the speed up really high and then I just kind of go for it. And I end up going on to autopilot. My hands eventually do slow down. So what I did with this spin is I put this speed quite a bit lower than it normally would. So the speed is at about 11 o'clock, which is slow for me. Um, but I'm finding that it actually is about right for this Romney and it's not when I zone out and kind of go off to never, never land. Um, the yarn, the singles are still the same at when I sort of come back to and need to stop. Um, compared to my, the initial. So the, I don't know if you want me to go back to the other camera, but this is my sample card that I have been making. And I can go to the bigger camera if you guys would prefer. But this right here where my ring finger is pointing, right here where it's moving, that is actually my three ply. And I can't put this any closer because it um, will blow out the camera. But you can see it's very round um, and it's still got that woolen nature to it um, because uh, of the carded fibers. So, uh, Zan, did I miss the post about bringing color side braids? I will talk about that later in the show, but no, you didn't. Um, Breed and Color will go live on the 25th of January, and we'll talk about that later. So, all right, I'm going to move on to the Cormo. Um, it's interesting that my friend mentioned the same things you mentioned last week about her e-spinner. She's thinking of going back to a treadle wheel. So, you know what, Diane, it's funny. Oh, thanks, Eve, I will. Um, okay, sounds good, Jenny. Um, you know, it's funny, Diane, because I, I'm very, I'm very, I... I'm very lukewarm about e-spinners. I, they, for me, they, they are completely a means to an end. They're awesome when we're traveling, when we're moving around, when we're camping. 
Um, but I always go back to my treadle wheels. And I think part of that's maybe because I'm teaching and some of the way that I explain things to you guys is by, you know, explaining through ratios and treadling speeds and treadling amounts and all that kind of stuff. So maybe there's kind of the more technical side of it too. But um, for me, it's very much the treadle wheels coming home. So let me go to the big camera for just a moment. Actually, I could go to the product camera and um, you guys can see this up close. So let me just hold this up. So this is the, is that a bit better? So this, these are the singles and I'm doing them at 28 wraps per inch. And you can see that there, there's not tons of twist in them. They're just um, laying nicely there at sort of roughly, probably about a 30 degree twist angle. And then the plied yarn, um, this is unwashed, is uh, a three ply, 14 wraps per inch, no bloom. And um, if you look with my uh, twi um, uh, twist angle here, you can see uh, that the yarn, I think, I think I hit, if I, if I can get a little bit closer there for you, I think it, it's about 30 degrees for the twist angle. And that really gave me a nice, a nice feeling yarn with a nice hand. So I wanted to do a bigger sample to see if that's actually what I wanted to do. So what my plan is, is to finish, fill this bobbin and then wind off the singles onto three weaving bobbins and ply a, a nice size skein of yarn and do, do a knit swatch. So that's my plan and why I'm not doing more sampling why I'm just spinning right now. And then this was my uh, two ply ply back test. So this is what the the ply back test looks like, like up there. And you can see that there's, it's a little bit more flat looking, a little bit more oval. Um, it's got a, a little bit of elasticity, a little bit, um, but not, not a ton. Again, gentle twist angle next to that three ply, not as round. Um, so you can see the, the difference there and I am spinning short forward, which is really unusual for me. I very, very rarely spin short forward. So, um, it's been kind of nice to, to mix it up. So, uh, the other spin that I was working on this week is my Cormo spin. So this was actually as a result of my Rambouillet that I did from Longway Homestead as part of the breed study with them. So um, I ended up with that, no matter what I did with that fiber, I ended up having to spin long draw. Um, and so I ended up just, you know, I, I just kept defaulting to long draw. So I finally was just like, fine, um, I'll spin it long draw. <laughs> and of course it came out really, really fine. And I two plied it and, um, I ended up, you know, um, Finishing it off is a quite a fine two ply, and it, it came out at about twenty wraps per inch. So this Cormo is something that Liz has been uh, processing for me, and um, or she did process for me. It was from Sarah Elizabeth Fiberworks. I know there's a couple of questions in chat, so I'll definitely go back and answer them, Dorothy and Samantha. Um, yeah, and I ended up processing, um, getting Liz to process the fiber because it was just sitting. It had sat for a while. It got a bit oxidized, um, so the lanolin got a bit crunchy, and I wasn't sure that it was salvageable. It was totally my fault, and I felt sick about it because it was quite expensive. It was quite an expensive bit of fleece. Um, it was a, I think it was a pound of fleece. Anyways, I started off spinning it continuous back and I kind of put it aside quite quickly uh, because I just felt like I wasn't really in sync with the fiber. I really felt like I was kind of fighting with it a little bit. So after spinning the Rambo and it was pin drafted, knowing that this Cormo that Liz had done for me at Kingdom Fleece and Fiberworks was also pin drafted, I thought, you know, these are fine fibers. Fine wools used to always be carded, always. They were always spun from roll eggs um, and done long draw because people would make bats with their hand cards and then they would spin them on their spindles um, and then eventually at their wheels. Um, you know, maybe I should give it a try and spin it long draw and see what happens. Well, that was the fix. So I'm off to the races finally with this Carmo. And actually, after I did this little bit of video, because I had the camera set up to do it. And I thought, well, I'll just, you know, see what it's like and just kind of see. I actually kept spinning and I've spun um, actually quite a bit. Um, my plan is to three ply this so that I don't have quite so much yardage as I did with the Rambouillet. And um, I am thinking about, I'm sort of hoping for like a 12 wraps per inch finished yarn. So like a DK weight. I don't know what my yardage would be. 
Um, but if I three ply this, then I actually would have something that I could really do with it. So maybe, you know, if it's not enough for a sweater, then a shawl or maybe a couple of smaller projects, keep it for like some background color work and something if I, if I wanted to. So, uh, Dorothy was wondering, hypothetically, if you spin finer, would there be less overspun yarn? Yeah, uh, hypothetically, for sure. The problem is that, um, I tend to spin fine, as you know, um, and, uh, I, I think that like it's it's the same old same old problem right e spinners are always spinning and they're always turning and they're always pulling no matter what so if you uh don't if you don't um if you sort of get lax and you sort of slow your hands down on a treadle wheel your feet will slow down with you um and then if your feet hands speed up your your feet will speed up with the e-spinner, it just keeps spinning and turning. It doesn't know that you're stopping or starting or, you know, anything. So if you're like trying to get something out of your fiber, all that twist is continuing. Like if you've got a little like nap or something, the e-spinner is going to continue to spin while you're fixing that. Whereas on a treadle wheel, you're going to sort of slow down and even maybe stop. So I think that's why over time, as I go through my entire singles, and then as I go through my entire skein, it becomes progressively more and more and more overspun and over twisted. So yeah, the halo on the three ply of that Romney is awesome. Yeah. Thanks Eve. Um, I agree they have their place, but there's something about your whole being, att being attuned to the wheel that makes it wonderful. I agree, Diane. I think there's a, there's a balance. What everyone does with the one, two, three, however many skeins that remain after knitting up a larger project with hand spun, I'm collecting a large batch of small amounts of different hand spun yarns. That's a great idea, Elizabeth. Um, Meg actually was able to get hers used, which is wonderful so that she can sell it if she doesn't really like it. That's great. It'll be great for you for plying Megan because you do quite high volumes of yarn. Um, and you'll find when you guys go away in the camper, it'll be awesome to have it then and get a battery pack. Um, that that's definitely the thing to do. Uh, Samantha was wondering where my printed protractor is from. They are actually my business cards. So, um, on the front, it says, Wool and spinning, and on the back, Z twist, S twist, and a protractor. So if you would like a couple, just send me uh, your mailing address and I will send you a couple in the mail. Um, it's lovely watching you spin long draw. Oh, thank you, Diana. That's really kind. Um, it is super freaking clever to have a protractor on the back of your business card. <laughs> thank you, Kelly. Um, I wanted to use a higher grade of, of, uh, car of, of um, card to make my business cards because I find that business cards, like you want them and you get them at festivals and stuff, which of course right now we don't have any, but um, you pick them up and then the, the paper is not really good quality. And then knowing me, coffee gets spilt on them and then I lose them. So I wanted something that I that I would hang on to, that I myself would want to hang on to. So what I've done with mine um, and actually, unfortunately, my lendrum is a little bit too far away for me to show you. But what I have done is I've actually punched, uh, did a hole punch in the upper corner here. Um, so the corner of the bis of the card itself, I put a I put a hole punch in, uh, hole punched it, and then I put a um, loop of yarn through, and then I actually attach these to the front of my wheels along with my spin control card. So actually, if you guys are happy to wait for just a second, I can show you what I mean because my lendrum is right here. So what I do is on the front here, I've got my Sukaplaki card, and then I also have my uh, spin control card. And these are just attached with some uh, rings that you can get at like the dollar store. Um, the other thing that works really well is um, uh, shower ring, um, shower ring, um, uh, rods like the the rings the shower rings those work really well too so yeah oh thanks Greta yes super genius yeah um I have a foot pedal for my e-spinner that I stop quickly to make adjustments oh so Sonia I want to talk about that let's go back to the Romney for just a sec um the Romney hang on the Romney if you guys look in the corner here and I can't show you because this is a pre-recorded video but in the corner there at the back there's a little uh, pedal there. So I'm going to go to the big camera for a second. I'm just going to unplug my e-spinner so that I can show you because I wanted to talk about this. So Sonia, thank you so much. Um, 
The e-spinners all come with foot pedals now. Like it's pretty much universal that e-spinners come with foot pedals. So the Ashford comes with one, the e Hansen comes with one, the Plyology one came with one. Um, they're great. Uh, they're really nice to have in front of you. You can put it on the floor, you can put it on the counter in front of you, whatever works for you, and then you can hit it when you need to stop or start. And um, they have a, you usually, the Hanson and the Ashford, they have like a slow down and a slowly go up. So they don't like stop like that, uh, which is really nice. However, when we're camping and I've got my battery pack, um, I usually put my e-spinner in a little, um, oh, what's that company called? Um, they do all the bath soaps and the, um, um, you know, essential oils and everything. Um, they have a, Diana helped me out. They have a store in the mall. <laughs> um, anyways, they have these, um, quite, uh, not lush, um, close. They have these canvas bags that they put all of your stuff in and they're quite heavy duty, not Bath and Body Works. And they're quite heavy. It's a, it's a local, it's a local shop. Um, they have a, they have these really heavy, heavy duty canvas bags that they give everybody. Sage. Thank you. It's Sage. And, um, they, these, these burlap bags, they're quite small. The e-spinner fits in it perfectly. But then to put my battery pack in and the foot pedal and, and, and it's just too much stuff. So what I have been doing, and it was Leah who just said Sage, who gave me the idea um, and we, her and I both tried it and it worked like a hot damn, excuse my language. Um, what we did was we took the e-spinner and we took off the foot pedals. Mine was plugged into the wall for right now because I'm working in the house, but we got these handy dandy little, uh, uh, you know, what are they called? <laughs> that turn it off and on. So um, instead of having the foot pedal and everything, the only thing is that you have to make sure that the one that you get has the right adapter for the your e-spinner so that you can plug it in in between your power. And this goes in the same spot in between my power and my battery pack as well. Like it works with the battery pack as well. And this has been revolutionary. Um, just getting rid of one more cable and one more box has been awesome. So thank you, Greta. The switch has been a game changer and Leah agrees game changer. So, um, I can post on the, um, uh, I'll try to remember to throw it into the show notes. Um, the, this one that's for the e-spinner for the Ashford e-spinner that I found that works. Um, the pack comes with two or three. So what I've done is I've put the spares into my Ashford e-spinner bag so that I know where they are if I ever were to lose one or if it ever broke or stopped working. But when you're purchasing them, you have to make sure that you have male and female. So they need to be different at each end so that they can go into the circuit. I'm pretty proud of myself for figuring this out. I did not ask Mike to help me. I did it myself. Um, and this kind of stuff really for me is like a big, like mind, I really have to get my head around it. So I am pretty proud of myself, but you have to make sure that you have male and female and you have to make sure you have the right adapter ends. Cause there are thousands of switches out there on the market. Whether you look at, whether you look at Amazon or in Home Depot or Rona or Lowe's or wherever you go, um, Ace, Ace Heart Home Hardware, like I can keep going. There are thousands of these things. So, um, I'll post the one that I bought and, uh, man, amazing. So something to think about. And I think it cost me $2 Canadian, which is like a penny in us dollars. So like, they're not expensive at all. Couple of dollars. So, uh, I got them off of, um, Amazon. Uh, and the only reason why I, why I actually did that was because I had a couple of other things that I had to get. So it actually worked out really, really well. So Yeah. Um, I like something like a sewing machine pedal for the e-spinner. And the cool thing about the, um, the foot pedals is you can put them on the floor. So for those people who want something that they can do with their feet so they don't have to pause with their hands and reach over, um, that works really well as a foot pedal and put it on the floor. Um, the last thing that I wanted to share with you guys was my Falkland spin. So, um, 
for Christmas. I didn't mention anything last week on the show because I knew it was going to be such a long show and we had so much to talk about. Um, the, oh, uh, thank you, Rebecca, uh, Becca for answering Linnea's question. Cause actually I missed Linnea's question. So let's just go back for just a sec. Rachel, when you spin to one bobbin and ball up to three, do you do it by hand or on a ball winder? I'm thinking about how to figure out how to make uh, three even length or width balls. And then Becca, thank you so much. Becca answered and said she pre weighs and then puts a contrasting color between each section. So she knows where to break it. So that's exactly what I do. Um, I weigh my bobbins. Uh, this is a trick that I got from both my friend Diana and who's in the chat today and also from my friend Kim McKenna. So what I have done with all of my bobbins is I weighed them on a small jewelry scale and I wrote the number of grams that each bobbin is on my on the bobbin itself with Sharpie. You might not want to write on your bobbin, so maybe use a piece of tape. Um, but I put uh, I, I put the grams of the bobbin on the bobbin itself, and then um, I can weigh stuff as I wind off. So if I forget, or if I've got something like this Romney where I'm going to be spinning a huge amount to one bobbin, um, I don't. Uh, put a breaker in between and put a contrasting fiber in because it's all one fiber and it doesn't really matter if it's totally even. With a three-ply fractal, I will put a separate color in between and make sure I know exactly where to stop. Um, but then as I'm winding off on my weaving bobbins, because I use um, weaving bobbins to store my singles, um, I will weigh the bobbin as I go. And then I will make sure that they're kind of roughly the same so that one is maybe like 62 grams one weaving bobbin, one's like 63 and one's like 59. And then, you know, if I have a little bit left over at the end, it's okay because it's a big spin. So there's going to be more singles down the road. Does that make sense? Does that help? Um, so for Christmas, um, I had been talking a lot about getting a Kromsky Brinstrol again. And uh, I had mentioned it on the show a few times and even I were trying to figure out how we could move things across the ocean. Um, and Mike, bless his heart, surprised me with this on Christmas morning. So, um, it was very, very generous of him. It was very thoughtful. I totally cried. <laughs> um, it was really, really kind of him. The reason for wanting the minstrel and for kind of getting one is more because, um, it's not really so much for the wheel. It's the sentimental value. It's the fact that I had this wheel, um, when, it was it was an inheritance that was given to me to purchase this wheel after um, my aunt died. And the reason why I'm doing all of this is because of her. So um, and why it all started in the first place. And um, and then after my dad died, I really felt like um, I just wanted the sentimental piece of it. Um, so I have ordered the distaff that goes on to it. Um, I'm waiting for it to come and, um, it's been kind of fun playing with it. So I have been spinning to finish up for, um, uh, my shifty. So I hadn't finished the spinning for the shifty. Um, so I'm using Polworth, uh, a green Polworth and silk from West Coast Color, uh, our friend Lynn up in Tappan, British Columbia, uh, for the background color. And then I've got from her, it's all Falkland for the contrasting color. So I've got a gold, I've got that blue that I showed you last week, and then I've got this great kind of purpley red um, that I'm spinning finally. And so I'm spinning to 14 wraps per inch as well, uh, same as my other spin, but this is a two ply. So with the three ply, you want to spin to 28 wraps per inch, but for a two ply, you're spinning to 21 wraps per inch. So I've had to really keep stopping myself and checking to make sure that I'm spinning thickly enough because I don't. If I go on to autopilot, my default is about 28 wraps per inch. Um, I don't like to spin too thin because then what do you do with all that yarn? Um, and I don't tend to knit lace. So what do you do with all that yarn? So um, that's kind of my default is 28 wraps per inch. So will this be the shifty that... <laughs> Oh, Rebecca, thank you. You made me laugh. Will this be the shifty that sticks? Cliffhanger explanation mark. I can show it to you guys if you guys want to see it. Um, so I start. So basically the Falkland on the minstrel has been just an opportunity to break the minstrel in. Um, some of the things that I found annoying about the minstrel when I owned it the first time around are absolutely still the still still a problem. Um, I do find if I'm not spinning on carpet, like here I was spinning on our laminate hardwood, um, which is actually being ripped out this spring. So it'll be interesting to see what, what these wheels are like on the new carpet um but it was steadily moving away from me so it's like stuff like that that's like oh yeah i remember needs a lot of oil 
Um, so I've had to stop quite a number of times to make sure I'm oiling it. It's a brand new wheel. It came out of the box. I built it myself that on Christmas Day. It was really kind of neat to be able to do that. Uh, it is a wheel that you can put together yourself. I didn't need Mike's help at all. I think I only needed him for one thing because there was something that wasn't connecting properly. Uh, and he had to go out, out to the garage and drill it. <laughs> um, so... Uh, and one of the bobbins was broken. So I, we glued that it was fine. Um, so it's like stuff like that. That's like, Oh yeah, I remember all this. Um, but you know, it's running really smoothly. It's running really nicely. If you look between my feet as the, as the video rolls, you can see it moving away. I can see it shifting and moving. So, um, just some fun things that are like, Oh yeah, I remember this. So, uh, but let me put it up to the big camera and I will show you my shifty. Actually, I'll put it on the product. Cause then we can talk about breed and color study too. So sweet to see you back on the minstrel. It's a lovely castle wheel. It is, Diana. You're absolutely right. And you know, it's when I when I sold it and I saw her put it into her vehicle and take it, I almost told her, no, no, I I'm I'm not gonna sell this after all. I was like 99%. Like I was I was like gonna say something, and then she got in her van and drove away. And I just was like, and I've regretted it ever since. It's not because of the wheel. Um, I do have it running in double drive, which has been really nice to have that double drive capability and have a couple of wheels now that can do that. It was the sentimental, you know, it's the fact that Yvonne loved that wheel so much and I would send her pictures of it and she just thought it was just the bee's knees. And it was, it was, it was a big deal, uh, when I, when I, when I bought it after she died. So, um, that's why I learned to weave. I also spin fine. And as you say, what do you do with yards and yards of lace? It's so true. Uh, so true, Eve. So this is the beginnings of my shifty. So not a huge amount of contrast to begin with. Um, this is the gold yarn that I'm starting out with. Um, actually, I can show it under here. It's probably a bit better. Um, this was the yarn that I spun as a two-ply while Rebecca was here, actually. Um, that was from... No, I spun it in October and November. And then I was... I think I was finished knitting or I was finishing right around the time of Fibers West. This was for my Copenhagen and I knit the uh, Copenhagen cardigan uh, with held with um, uh, Romney mohair and I had a ton of yarn left over. So this is um, the gold from that. And the reason why I decided to use it is because the three yarns, I don't have the blue one right here, but the blue yarn, they the three of them just make a really nice contrast between the three of them as well as the sweater itself, the background yarn. So the background yarn is this gorgeous gray Polworth and silk that I had spun that from Lynn that was in my stash forever. And uh, I kept coming back to this little swatch. I just love this little swatch. And so um, I wound the first ball of yarn. It wasn't the most even spin that I've ever done. I wasn't really super happy with the finished yarn, but I loved this little swatch. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I didn't do the... Uh, I, I'm doing the same thing that I did with my pink velvet. So, you know, with my pink velvet, I cast on for the body of the sweater. And then I went back later and did the ribbing for the, for the collar, uh, for the neckline. I'm going to, I did that again with this sweater. So I will pick up and do the ribbing, um, after, uh, I just cast on the number of stitches that I needed. So we'll see how it goes. Um, that gold is from West Coast. It is Greta. And actually, I've seen it on the website. I know that she still has that gold. Um, it's kind of got like some some purples in it, um, some browns. It's a real tonal. It's really, really, really beautiful. So, and the reason why I, I bought the red, this ready pink, I bought this and the blue for the shifty to go with this when I was with uh, Rebecca at my friend Anne's house right after all the shutdowns um, in March when we, when Fibers West was canceled. So um, yeah, uh, the reason for the ribbing, picking up the ribbing later is because I found with my, um, a lot of my top down sweaters, uh, and this really was drilled home to me when I finished off my um, uh, stone crop pullover, which is actually in the background because it needs to be fixed. I bought, I got yarn from Katrina. Finally, um, she had, some, she found a mini skein for me. So I bought it from her. Um, I find the neck, if, if picking up the neck and doing it after the fact means that that lovely cast on edge where you pick up your stitches creates more structure. Um, and it, it keeps the sweater from bagging out and from pulling out. That's just for me personally, I find that it works really well. Um, and I, I like, I like that slightly 
a more structured neckline rather than a big boat neck, which is what happened with my stone crop. So I have yarn now to fix it and it's uh, it's on the mending, the mending list. So I'm gonna make it a bit longer and uh, fix the neckline. So that is on my list for the new year. Um, oh, Sarah, yeah, I inherited my Ashford traditional from my grandmother, so I definitely will keep it forever too. It's, it's funny how some of these things that we have, like it, they, they're not necessarily practical. It's just stuff that we have because of the sentiment. And that's part of the reason why we make and why we do what we do, right? I got this absolutely, it made me cry. <laughs> it's been a lot of crying lately. Um, I got this amazing, um, uh, email from um, somebody last night who's part of our community. Um, we had showcased her shawl a couple of episodes ago. And unfortunately, her mom has died from COVID and, and um, at the end of December. And I got this just absolutely amazing email from her. And I, I'll just read the one sentence because I want to protect her. Um, I want to protect her um, oh, Dana, I hope that you found us. Um, I hope Dana, you got in and that you found us. She says, she's just wondering when the live stream is. It's right now, Dana. I hope you're here. I'm sorry. I didn't see your email. Um, so the email, um, you know, this is, this is why we do what we do. Um, uh, she says that I know you understand loss and the connection in the objects we make and the times that we spend in making, in the making, but there is also joy and comfort in these objects and minutes spent. I can't say it any, any better, any better. Um, yeah. And, and thank you for that email to that person. Um, Diana says my Ashford traditional is my first and most beloved wheel. Yeah. Did I use a regular stretchy cast on? So for the stone crop, she calls for a tubular bind, uh, cast on, which I did. Um, and then for the pink velvet, it was, I can't remember what kind of cast on it was. Um, but it was just, it was, it just was too big. So I ripped it back and then I just, um, went back and did it later and then did a, um, I think I did a regular cast off and that worked really well on that one. So that was kind of my plan for the shifty was just to kind of keep going. Uh, so community participation for January, tell us about your most recent spin and you can share it in the episode thread on Ravelry. If you use Ravelry and if not, you can share in the comment section on YouTube, not the live chat, but the actual comment section. And I will be doing a random number generator. The first episode of March, uh, February, sorry, not March, February. And I will be giving away this gorgeous fiber, this fin, fin and silk, uh, from bullseye. It's four ounces from Kingdom Fleece and Fiberworks. This is from Lids. I actually have started spinning this, but like just started for my natural shades long. And I thought that I would share all of that next week because I'm just kind of amassing what, what I'm doing with, with my natural shades along. Um, so this will be, Liz was kind enough. She was, she was in the chat earlier. I'm not sure if she's still here, but, um, she was kind enough to send this as a giveaway for somebody in the show. So I'll be sending this out to somebody, um, at the beginning of February. So we've got lots to talk about, uh, breeding color study. So there's been a lot of questions about breeding color study. So let me try to address some of them here and now, but I'm not, uh, but we won't go on and on because there are blog posts and, um, wool and spinning radio episodes and whatnot up explaining everything. So please go and check that stuff out. Please read to the end, um, so that you know exactly what to do for those who are just participating for the first time. The way that Katrina does it is because we have had such, um, such a huge amount of interest in the past, which is amazing. Um, and people seem to be really excited about this study this time around. What Katrina is going to be doing is for the first hour that the link goes live, it will be for patrons only, and it will be an unlisted link, kind of like what we use for the live stream. Uh, and you guys will have access and the discount will be automatically applied. So you do not need to put in a coupon code or a discount or anything. You just need to order your fiber and Bob's your uncle. After that first hour at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Monday, January 25th, the listing will go live and will be available for everybody. You do not need to be a patron of the community. You do not need to be a member of the community to participate. This is for everybody. 
If you do not want to purchase fiber um, and you want to get some from somewhere else or you want to dye your own or you want to do your own thing, absolutely. You are more than welcome to do that. You are more than welcome to still participate with us in the Ravelry group. There is a dedicated thread for Breed and Color Study. Um, there will also, depending on demand on that first morning, there will be probably, there will be um, pre-orders. So Katrina has outlined that and explained that really well in the Woolen Spinning Radio episode that went live yesterday on Friday for patrons of the community. So please listen. Um, and I will actually link it right now in the live, in the live chat so that if you haven't seen that episode of Woolen Spinning Radio, you can go and have a listen to it later today while you're making dinner or doing your spinning or knitting or something. Um, since we can't have people over anyways, you may as well listen to me and Katrina. Uh, and it will also give you some background about the inspiration for this, this current study. So I actually have started dabbling in spinning mine and I will show you next week um, what I am doing with mine. But this is the Moret. So these are the colors of the Moret and there is some natural, she has left some of the natural underlying color of the Moret of the Shetland. We're doing Shetland this time around for those who didn't realize. So this is the Moret, and then this is the warm gray. Uh, so it's kind of like a medium kind of when you kind of look at them across a gradient. And then this is the uh, white. So I have prepped mine uh, to do a three ply fractal with some of my fiber. So that's why it's all wrapped up and ripped apart because it's no longer in braid form. So I am doing a three ply fractal um, with some of it and I will show you the spinning and we'll get on the wheel next week. So look forward to that. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Megan. I will tell Katrina if she doesn't get a chance to see this lovely podcast to hear Crafty Jacks' story about this fiber. So uh, that's Breed and Color Study. So please keep the questions coming if you guys have more questions about it as we move on with the show right now. Uh, but hopefully that's clear as mud. And for those who are just, just that th this is your first time and you haven't done Breed and Color Study before, there is a bit of a frenzy for that first hour. Like that's totally normal. Um, if you don't want to be a part of that initial frenzy and it just stresses you out and it's just too much, just wait for the pre-orders. Um, there will be a bit of a delay in when you get your fiber, but on the other hand, it'll be a lot less stressful. And this study goes for six months. So like you don't have to be finished your spinning by March. Like we're going to be working on this into the summer. So do not worry. Do not stress. This is supposed to be for fun. Uh, it also is supposed to be um, a learning experience. So uh, we were talking in queries and explorations a couple of weeks ago about like breed and color study should come from your workshops budget, not from your staff's budget. This is fiber to work with and to play and to learn and um, to, to experiment and give yourself that, that permission to do that. Sharon says, I'm going to go on the link that you put up and ask me. So you just have to sign in. Uh, Sharon, you're probably not signed in. Um, but if you continue to have a problem, can you um, send me a note? Because uh, it should be released for everybody. So I will have a look at it after and make sure that everybody has access. All right. So it's always, it's usually an issue of being logged in. All right. So 51 yarns. Uh, we finished group A. Uh, group A's 51 Yarns Spin Along went for two years and they just finished in December and there were several people that they, they went all the way through and Kelly uh, was sort of got a bit derailed with hers but she was very much participating throughout and Megan and Rebecca and I sat down and recorded a Wool and Spinning Radio episode at the beginning of the month um, about their reflections of this big study. And then Kelly posted in the Ravelry group about some reflections about her study and sort of the overarching two years and how it went. So I wanted to share them with you. Uh, so Kelly, who's in the chat right now, she says, I must admit, I totally fell off the radar with this one right around the time the pandemic hit. Although I do not blame the pa pandemic, there were other things cropping up. I think, I think we can all relate for sure, Kelly. I will say not being able to get to any shows or farms limited my fiber purchases significantly. So I didn't have as many options when choosing yarns for whatever yarn to spin. I did up to week 27, which was the tweed. So I'm only a little bit of halfway through. I plan to take 2021 to finish up the rest because I do very, very badly want to finish this. Just for funsies, I wanted to share a few of my favorites that I have done. So the tweed was a 50 50 50 uh, Columbia Black Welsh Mountain with five grams of recycled sari silk. Um, that yarn was beautiful. Um, that was the first one that cycled through, the gray one. 
the boucle, which she had a lot more fun making than she thought she would, 100% extremely long stapled fin. It was probably seven or eight inches. And then her cabled yarn, which was 100% pole worth. I really, really want to get good at doing this kind of yarn. It's a lot of work, but the look of it is so entrancing. I totally agree. Um, edited to add that I think I won't stay super strict this year to keep it go do, to keep go, doing all the yarns in order of the book. I might have been a bit too tyrannical in that through 2020, and that's why I fell off. I think we can all relate. Uh, so I'm going to do them as an on an as whim dictates basis and do the yarn that speaks to me at the moment. That's wonderful, Kelly. Thank you for sharing. And for those who are working through their study in Group B. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope that it's going well. Um, I've noticed that the thread has started to pick up again. So if there's, if you need anything or if you are um, struggling with any of the yarns, just tag me and reach out and uh, I'll pop in and, and help you guys out. Our Natural Shades Along now has its own thread uh, or its own channel in the Slack channel. So make sure that you join. It's um, hashtag Natural Shades Along. Um, and that is to celebrate naturally colored uh, fibers. So it doesn't have to be wool uh, or it doesn't have to be all wool. It could be silk. It could be wool. It could be plant-based fibers. Um, it's just celebrating natural colors and natural shades of these, all of these amazing fibers that we have access to. So I am in the process. I've planned mine. I spent some time last weekend and I actually sat down and played with yarn and fiber and I've actually planned my notes. So I will hopefully be able to share that with you this week. Um, Greta is wondering, oh, so Greta, um, that is something that Katrina is trying to work out. So that is something that other people have asked as well. Um, particularly for those for the breed and color study who want to order larger quantities. So, um, I think, um, yeah, I think, I think, um, that's something that we'll, we'll sort of figure out this week for sure, especially for those who want to order larger quantities. So the, um, it's going to be offered as two kits. There will be the full braid set. So the braids are going to be, there's three braids. Um, so it'll be a full braid set or a half braid set. And we're asking that if people want more, more, um, that they could maybe do the pre-order, um, so that everybody has access to what they want in the regular order. Um, so if you want a larger quantity and you know that that's the case, um, we will, um, um, then, then we're just asking people to wait. So some of that stuff will, will sort of work out as the week goes on and we will keep it, keep you guys informed. So this is from Holly. This is for the tin can knits along. I think I'm going to wind this along down sort of towards the end of January because this was something that we were sort of working on through the holiday season for gifts and people were finishing things up for the new year and whatnot. And I think we'll kind of wind this along down. And what we'll do is we won't formally end it. We'll just move it down in Ravelry from the sticky area. We'll move it down to the regular. And then as you guys are finishing stuff up, just continue to share. Um, so this is from Holly. I already did one of these for my daughter and I love knitting it so much that I had to do one for myself. I chose the same size small simply because I wanted a more fitted look and I did a full sleeve with decreases every eight rows, she thinks. I added decreases right at the beginning of knitting the body and a couple times more so that the sweater would fall straight instead of flaring. Uh, I had to knit the short row section for the longer back twice because my holes were too distracting the first time. And I'm long torsoed, so I added length um, and I'm happy, oh, just so that it would hit me just below the waistline. There's still lots of positive ease and I'm super happy with this overall. It's extremely soft, very comfortable to wear and warm without being sweat inducing. I did block this, but even then I feel the lace could use more blocking with pressure to give, to get the lace to lay down and open up a bit. That's what I found with mine. There's no break row in between uh, the lace chart as you're knitting. And so you've got lace every single row. And I think if I were to knit this again, I think I would do it. This is the love note. Um, I think that I would actually knit, um, I, I think I would finagle it a little bit so that there was just, a, so that there was a break row in between every, every lace row, it would stretch the lace out and make it longer. But that was like my primary complaint was I ended up with kind of like the lace just wouldn't lay flat. So, um, cause I love this sweater. I think it's just beautiful. So I, um, I, I think just for me, I, I would kind of finagle it a little bit. 
Um, I did block this. Uh, the lace work is just a bit puckery from, but from seeing others and seeing other, reading others' comments, it's the nature of the pattern and not anything that I did. Love this, the process, the yarn, the color, and the finished product. It looks amazing, Holly, really beautiful. I have to admit when I saw this um, on the Ravelry um, thread, uh, I was really drawn to it because of course these are my colors. <laughs> And I love your photos. Um, it looks like you're out at a ranch or something. I wonder if it's on your property. It just looks amazing. Jenny shared, uh, some of you may know my husband had a heart attack last weekend and the knitting has been my has been healing for my family. I Waldorf homeschool my kids, so we do a lot of fiber arts. And my 16-year-old son finished his marshland this week, considering it his knitting therapy. I'm so glad wool warms, not just our hands, but our hearts as well. And I thought I'd share his work he's so proud of. Absolutely. We should all be proud of him. He's 16 years old and he's knitting. The sweater that he knit for her for Christmas was amazing. So. Mary Jo. She has been knitting more blankets. Mary Jo, you are amazing. Amazing. She, her son might have mentioned in passing that his girlfriend, who I haven't met yet because 2020, thought she would like a small lap blanket for those cold evenings while they were sitting around a campfire. You know, he just mentioned it. Um, so I abandoned all my other knitting and cast on. I had been, I had some commercial yarn left over from a sweater I knit uh, two years ago and some hand spun from a lady I bought my wheel from. The blanket grew from 29 inches to a nice square 36 by 36 when I washed and set it to dry. The garter was easy to knit and is so thick and warm. I was attracted to this pattern for the simple graphic lines in the Baja style. And she's done this pattern before. So the yellow and red and gray blanket she had already knit before. Mary Jo knits a lot of blankets for those who don't know her. Um, she's very active in our Ravelry group and uh, her knitting is always on point and her spinning and whatnot. So just absolutely beautiful. And I have to admit that gray and yellow blanket, I'm not a blanket knitter, you guys know that, but that gray and white, the, the sorry, the gray, white and yellow one with that hit of red, I have to admit, I was like, oh, maybe that would be a way to use up some hand spun. Hmm. <laughs> so now you've got me thinking. Uh, the next uh, thing that was shared in the thread this past week was from Alyssa. Um, Alyssa, um, a project that she did for Spooky Spin. Um, so it must be spun and knit in the month of October, which I think is a cool, really cool idea. And this is the escarpment cowl that she did. Beautiful. Really, really gorgeous. I love those colors. Um, I'm kind of ignoring chat. I'm really sorry, you guys. Um... All of you are loving on the love note, which is wonderful. Um, Beck, Rebecca, um, enjoy your lunch. It's so good to see you. Um, looks fabulous on her. Well done. Those blankets and sweater are incredible. Um, that's so funny hearing about Jenny's son knitting that in secret. Yeah, so he knit her a sweater uh, for Christmas and he was, um, her son, she was telling us about it a couple weeks ago and it, we were all just laughing so hard because um, her son, he's like 16 and he was knitting her a sweater um, so he was staying up late at night, you know, with the blanket, uh, you know, under the blankets with the light on and she's worried that she's going to have to like intervene. And here he is knitting a sweater for his mom. <laughs> and, and she showed us the sweater it, and she was wearing it. It looks amazing. All over color work. It's just incredible. So, oh, our children, they're amazing. Uh, this last one is from Sharon. So she's finished this sweater from some of her earliest hand spun yarn from about 15 years ago, uh, give or take. It is half Corydale, half Cotswold, a bit toothy, a proper woolly wool. I love that, Sharon, a proper woolly wool. And it was naturally dyed with indigo. So this yarn, this little yarn sample that just cycled through in the photos, I, I saw that photo on her projects page. I just, oh my goodness, I just swoon loved it and then this this cardigan is absolutely beautiful so i looked up the pattern um and if you if you click on um in the show notes um if you click on sharon's ravelry username uh which i've linked it's frog stitch if you click on that it will take you to her projects page and take you to the pattern the original cardigan pattern is actually short sleeved and she's lengthened it and um, kind of made it into more of like a sweater um and it uh man it's beautiful. I love that cable detail at the front and then that lace through the raglan. It's really beautiful. So well done. And even and an outerwear kind of cardigan like that is going to be warm. Um, but like this, it's super warm. But with that lace, it just makes it kind of just 
brings it up a notch, you know. Um, before we take off today, thanks to you, wonderful community. Rough clinic day yesterday and didn't sleep much last night. But after riding the trainer and some time, some friend time, I feel world's better. Thank you, Megan. I think all of us have been really feeling it lately. Um, I'm going to just speak for myself, but I, I have to admit, I everybody that I've talked to, anybody I've connected with over the last week or so, everybody's just like, <sighs> so... Um, I'm, I'm glad that we can be here for one another and that we can support one another in whatever that looks like. Celebrate with one another, support one another. Um, yeah, it's it's a big deal right now. I think it's really important right now to really lift each other up and hold each other up, um, whatever that looks like. So thank you everybody for being here today. Thank you for your time spent in this place. I appreciate it. I appreciate your tolerance and your kindness towards one another um, and um, your integrity as human beings is just amazing. Um, you guys are, are just incredible. So thank you so much. And um, I will see you same time, same place next week. Um, uh, this week, trying to think what's going on this week. We've got uh, the Wool Circle for those who participate in that live stream. That is this coming Friday at 9.30 Pacific Standard Time. And um, I and then we've got the live stream on Saturday. So we've got kind of, you know, a couple of things to look forward to this week, which is really wonderful. So I am currently working on stuff for February for you guys, and I've been having a lot of fun doing that. So I'm excited to share that with you next month in the Spinning Pearls vlog and in the How I Spin vlog. And uh, if you guys have any questions or you want to know anything about uh, spinning silks and whatnot, please don't hesitate to reach out. Sanjo Silk, who is a local um, uh, silk weaving studio here, um, they do uh, spinning fiber. Most of it is silk. They have created a discount code for our community as well as a spin box for our community. So I will be publishing all of that and getting that out to you guys um, in the next couple of days. So please have a look at that if you want to participate in our luxury fibers along that's going on uh, in the community sort of this whole year. Um, it's going to sort of be our overarching theme for the year. Um, please uh, have a look at their stuff. Joe and Diana are amazing and they've been incredibly supportive of all of us and wanting us to, to you know, um, have a really amazing spinning experience. Uh, they did, I did, I did just get some 65 cashmere 35% uh, silk from them. And I, I, I'm going to get this on the wheel quick because we're doing cashmere in uh, March. But this is one of the blends that's going to be included in the spin box for us. And um, man, it's divine. I opened this up and I just was like, I can't spin this. It's too nice. And then I was like, no, this is what we're doing. This is the whole point. So um, I'll be posting that in the next couple of days. So please have a look for that if you want to participate um, and spin some of those fibers that I've been spinning. I think it'll have Erie, Muga, Mulberry, and then a Cashmere Silk Blend. So really, really wonderful things to look forward to. Until next time, happy spinning, happy knitting, happy dreaming, happy all the things. Thank you for being you, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, everyone.